a certain breed of cattle and how well they gain weight, mm -hmm. that would be your population. So yes, this is examples. So your population could be, I could be, um, you know, it could be test scores of students who took the PSAT last week. I think there's more on the screen anyhow. So if you go out and measure things, it does not have to mean it's a population of people. It could be a population of birds. So your population can be many things. That's the big group you're trying to study. However, most of the time it's impossible for us to go out and study every single thing in the population. Even in Seneca, how hard would it be to go interview every single person in Seneca? That'd be awfully difficult. Let's just have a gigantic party because we know everybody in Seneca will show up to a gigantic party. So instead, we do a sample and we try to use that sample to represent what the entire population is doing or thinking. So a sample is just about nothing more than a portion of your population. How we pick that sample is going to be important. Okay, now, here's where I'm going to go uh, more advanced on you this year. Okay, there's a difference in whether we're talking about populations or samples. Okay. When you all calculate mean, median, and mode, those would be some of the basic statistics you've been doing for years. If you calculate the mean, median, and mode of an entire population, you have calculated, you've done a parameter. You have described the entire population. If you have done a calculation of your sample, you have actually found a statistic. Oh. So now everybody generalizes it and they think statistics, they just call it statistics, but in reality, if you talk about statistics, you are, you're talking about a sample. If you talk about all the population, it's called a parameter, not a statistic. We've done uh, range, standard deviation, all those things. If we calculated it on a sample, it was a statistic. If we calculated it for the entire population, it's called a parameter. So that's the distinction between the two. In the real world of statistics, it's a big deal whether you know whether you're talking about a population or a sample. That's a major event. So, so, big question. How do we get our data? Okay. Some of these methods that you all get to do, some of these we can't do here at school very easily. A lot of them are just observational studies. You sit and you watch what's happening. You just, um, when they uh, sit at the, up here at the corner of the highway with a radar gun, and they, and they just measure the speed of every car that drives by, that's an observational study. You aren't influencing it anyway, you're just measuring how fast the cars are going by, and that's it. Yeah, I'm not sure it's how opinion is going to be. <laughs> you could sit at the baseball game and measure the speed of every pitch. Uh, that's the key thing, you can use a radar gun. The key thing is, you're just observing what happens. You are not influencing what happens in any way. Uh, yeah, there's more on the screen. There's more. Okay. Ways you can do that. You can do what's called a sample survey. And you go out and you, you collect information about a small group to represent then what's happening in your population. That's very commonly, that's essentially what you guys are going to do. You're going to do a sample survey. Don't you dare. You just did it. Didn't change the screen. Okay. Now, what, when you all hear the word census, what do you normally think of census? People. Something that comes around 10 years. Every 10 years we do the census, but what is that a study of? The entire the entire, we tried to study the entire population of the country. Okay. In this case, though, we're out. You're out. To, when you try to do a census, you're trying to include everybody. So, if we wanted to truly try to study every single person in Seneca, we would make an effort to contact every single person in Seneca. Now, whether we could use 
circumstances that you can actually get that done are pretty difficult. When they do the national census every 10 years, they hire people. They first send it out by mail. And then if you don't respond by mail, they hire people in every area to come out and knock on your door trying to get you to answer the census question. They pay good money to do that. Can you get the people to do the census? You can. They can. I don't think they can force you. I mean, technically, the government says that you, everybody should participate in the census, but I don't know. I think it would be violating your civil rights if they forced you to, so I think you can refuse it, but <laughs> I've never tried to refuse. It's not that hard to answer the survey questions and mail it back in. <laughs> can I switch screens? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, whoops, there's one more on there. Yeah, all right. Experiment. This is what we don't really have the ability to do here at school, which would be really cool if we could. Experiments are when you actually, they call it applying a treatment to a group and see what happens. This is how they do um, studies for new medicines and drugs. They take a group of people, um, a lot of, there's a lot of trial studies for um, cancer patients trying out different drugs and they'll divide the patients into two or three groups depending on how they want to study it one, and they will not tell the patients which group they are in. One group is the control group where they actually don't get anything. They give them a fake pill or fake medicine, yeah. placebo. Cool. If you give them the placebo, so they want them to mentally think they're getting the drug. Others, they may, they may give one group uh, a slower dose of the drug, they may give a third group a higher dose of the drug, and then they study how, what, how did it impact, how did it treat the cancer. So that's a plan treatment. Here at school, we could do, um, I could do a room painted in neon colors and then put you in a pastel room and, figure, and teach the exact same class and see if that had any influence on your learning based on the environment you're in. Exactly. They've actually done studies like that. So experiments are when you actually divide into two groups and you actually do things to one group different than the other group. Okay. Errors. This is what you're going to try to prevent in your studies that you do. But I am going to ask you, as once you all have done your surveys and done your little projects, Part of it is for you to analyze what kind of error did you create. Some errors can't be avoided, some can be avoided. Okay. Bias is, um, when I say a systematic error, what do you mean to be systematic? You selectively choose to do If something's systematic, it happens regularly. So a systematic error occurs every time your measurement's taken. An easy example would be, Okay, you're going to measure the weights of the students. Okay, suppose the scale you're using is off by two pounds. Well, then it's always going to be off. It's going to be consistent. Yeah, it's consistently off. That's bias. It's not going to have a huge impact or you can correct for it if you find out, but it's got to be an error that happens on every single measurement you do. That's when you have bias. Random error is what you really can't control. It's error that occurs unpredictably. Maybe um, the scale you're using sticks every once in a while. Not You never know. It's not like every third person it sticks on. It just randomly it sticks and it doesn't quite give you an accurate measurement sometimes. That would be random. You can't control it. It's not happening on regular intervals. Bias, we try to look for and hopefully catch. Random error, that's part of the process of doing a statistical study. Sometimes you have random errors. You can't avoid it. Okay. What you are concerned about is if your study is reliable. This is a big deal if you're doing uh, studies that you're going to publish to the world. You need to have a reliable study. 
And that simply means if you did it again, if you did the study more than once, would you get similar results? So if you time somebody texting a message, and you give them the message, and then you time them a second time, say how long did it take them to, to type this message, you should get similar results. Yeah. It's the same way if, if the ACT is a reliable test, if you take the ACT five times, you should, and you haven't done anything outrageous to improve yourself, and you just go take it regularly, you should get similar scores every time. If you, they don't, then their test is not very reliable, and that's a problem. Okay. The other thing we worried about is how valid is the test. Validity is a lot harder to detect, but it's, does it measure what it's supposed to measure? Does the data measure what it's supposed to measure? And in particular, um, if I was to give you a math test, but it's all word problems, am I always measuring your math skill? No. Because it could also be measuring your what? Math. Grammar, your reading skills. You know, and there's certainly lots of people who have that issue. They can do the math great, but maybe they have reading issues and have difficulty deciphering what the problem's telling them. So if my, my test needs to be measuring their math skills, not measuring their reading skills. Hey, did you check your time? I did a minute ago, but I'm probably, yep, I'm probably a good place to stop. <laughs>